Welcome back. You're watching Traders Corner and joining me as always is Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julieta. Garth, we start off with the S&P 500, which after a few months of steady grind higher is looking all of a sudden uh, quite interesting, but not necessarily for all the right reasons. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's come off the boil quite a bit in the last week uh, following the spat between uh, Donald Trump and, and Xi uh, in China. Um, and I call it a spat. I mean, it, you know, some are saying it's a trade war. Um, call it what you will. The markets are not happy about it. And it looks as if there's going to be continued uncertainty around this, probably until the two of them meet at the G20 summit in Japan, which is in June. Mm. So we've still got three or four weeks until that, that happens. And, uh, and, and in that time, I guess the market maybe will chop around and make, uh, you know, not do an awful lot in that time. If we look at the chart of the S&P 500 here now, um, what I'd repeatedly gone, about, gone on about um, in weeks past was this 28.15 level and how when it broke above that, it then opened the prior top, yes. which it did. It got to the prior high from September last year and very briefly breached that prior high, traded up to about 29.50. And at that stage, it did look as if it was likely to push on to 3,000. Yeah. And then uh, Trump got on his Twitter and, uh, and started tweeting about raising tariffs uh, on, on additional t Chinese imports and what have you. And then you can, of course, see the sell-off that has followed. And the, the S&P 500 has dropped about 150 points from the recent peak at the beginning of May mm. to where it is now. Um, I just want to look at, at, at the chart a little bit more zoomed sure. in as well and just show you the significance of this 2,800 level. Now, you can see that was peaks back in late February and then it's some swing lows back in late March as well. And then it's pulled back to that 2800 area last night being Monday. And thus far the futures are up at the moment. And it does look as if we may start to see a little bit of a bounce from this 2800 area. There's a gap in the chart that formed yesterday. And that gap uh, is, is pretty much where the underside of that 50 day moving average is there. That's at about 2862. So what I suspect may happen from here now is we perhaps have a bit of a bounce, maybe go and try and fill that gap. Mm -hmm. And then let's see if it struggles at the underside of the 50-day moving average after that and begins to roll over, then you may start to see the right shoulder of a big head and shoulders pattern forming over here. So I think we must just keep that in mind in the near term. Um, that's kind of the way I see it for now. It does look as if there's been a little bit of near-term technical damage done here. And I think we've got to watch the nature of any bounce that we see from this level. Yeah, okay. So technical damage on the American markets. What about the South African market? Yeah. Because uh, uh, sort of a, a fairly similar picture there. Yes, it's, it's similar. We've also come off the boil quite hard. I mean, our top 40 index has fallen over 3,000 points in the last couple of days. Now, I've been a stuck record since the beginning of this year saying that we're in this rising channel mm. and that that's contained the trading action quite nicely and that each time it's pulled back to the bottom of the channel, it's found support and bounced higher. Now, what's happened in the last few days is it's actually broken out the bottom of that channel. It's also broken down below the 50-day moving average, which is really the first time this year that our top 40 has traded below the 50-day moving average. So I think, again, what we need to be careful of here is the type of stability we see. I mean, there, there is a little bit of support here at around about 50,000 at the moment, some lateral support, which is not drawn in on this chart. But if we start to see some consolidation here, but we struggle to really get moving to the upside with any significance, then you may find that there's the possibility that we could still see another leg lower down towards the 200-day moving average, which is at 49,000. And that also coincides with some lows that we saw in March. Mm -hmm. So I think let's just keep an eye on this. There is technical damage that's been done here. And, 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 and if this market f continues to fail at the underside of the what was previously that upward channel, then that would be a, a little bit more cause for concern, I think. Yeah, which is, a, I suppose, um, that's the, the overall state of the market. Um, and it's maybe demonstrated somewhat in the two shares that you had bought fairly recently. Well, the one a share actually a few weeks ago, and that would be Cap Industrial, which of course is a very um, uh, SA Inc. kind of share. Yeah. You'd been holding on to this in the expectation or the hope that it would sort of climb higher. You'd adjusted your stop loss. But what's it doing now? Yeah, it hasn't really pushed higher. And, and it's a bit disappointing. So I mean, the reason why we went into this trade back in late March March was when Steinhoff announced that they were doing an accelerated book build to sell out their remaining holding in Cup Industrial. And of course, when that happens, you do see a share price gap to the downside as the shares are placed at a discount in an accelerated book building process. And my expectation at the time was that the share price would ultimately recover and go and close that gap down. 
Now, it has done that. It's pretty much closed the gap. But last week on the show, I said that I would look to just hold the trade a little bit longer because there was some positivity coming into the markets around the de domestic sector, the South Africa Inc. shares. And CUP Industrial is very much in that space. Yeah. And I figured, let's give it a chance. Let's let the election go off and see whether there's not a little bit of a further uplift in the domestic s sectors of the market that may benefit the stock. Now, as it happens, I mean, the election's gone off last week. It's pretty much, I think, the Goldilocks scenario, really. Uh, there's no major surprises in, in the election. The ANC still has their majority. Cyril Ramaphosa gets to pick his cabinet now, mm. etc. I mean, quite honestly, I think if, if we had painted all the scenarios, which we did before yes. the elections, I, I think we've got the best outcome. Okay. Uh, and one would have expected that the South African Inc. sectors might have pushed up a little bit. But unfortunately, it has all been rather overshadowed by this trade war between <laughs> China and the U.S., and, and we've, we've seen a bit of risk off in the global markets, and that obviously has also affected our markets. Uh, and, and any sort of positive uplift that we might have expected in the South African sector has been scuppered to a certain extent by the, the weakness globally. Yeah. So what are you going to do now, Garth? Because, um, you know, when you're in a trade for, for quite a while, it's, it's what, two months now mm -hmm. almost? Um, you know, it, there also is an expense to it. And if yeah. you have a, a time stop loss, perhaps you could just um, maybe flesh out that concept um, because that's now pertinent to this trade. It, it is, certainly. So a time stop loss is where you say to yourself, you give it a, a certain period of time to do its work and to either reach the target or get stopped out, one of those two things. And if it gets to a certain period of time and neither of those two scenarios has played out, then sometimes you might say to yourself, well, let's just move on. Because mm -hmm. you're right that when you trade CFDs, there is an interest component that you need to consider. And that adds up over time. And, um, and then the other thing, of course, is that it also detracts and it takes some of your focus. So, and also your capital. And your capital, correct. So, so in a case like this, I mean, I'm, I'm probably reaching the end of my tether with this <laughs> trade in terms of my patience. Because it, it, it's taking a very long time. Um, it's not really making us any significant money and it's not losing us money no. and I, I, I might actually just look to cut it quite soon we've moved the stop loss up to seven rand 20 which essentially is these lows that we've seen over the past two weeks if it starts to break down below there then i'll cut the trade definitely uh, but i am still giving it the benefit of the doubt for the moment but it's sort of on final notice as it were because if it doesn't start to pay, pay us quite soon, I might just cut it anyway. Yeah, it's not one of those trades that uh, you open and think, wow, this fills me with so much joy. It's, yeah. a, it's a Marie Kondo kind of trade. Throw it out. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I, mean, I, I always say that best trades usually work off the bat and you start to make your money pretty quickly. And this one really has taken an awfully long time to get going. Yeah. So it may very well be a time for us to move on and look for the next thing. Okay. The next thing was Bidvest. Uh, um, and, and you had bought into this in the expectation that there would be um, a post-electoral, I suppose, fill-up for some of the SA Inc. shares, yeah. which hasn't really happened, especially in the case of Bidvest. I'm not sure if it's just because of the domestic factors that you've sketched out, or, as you say, because we've been now caught up in this um, global war of words between uh, um, Trump and Xi. Yeah, so I, th I think it's probably the latter to a certain extent. Um, we did like the look of Bidvest last week, uh, and when I showed a longer term chart last week, I showed that the break above 215 Rand was a very bullish break that looked as if it should open further mm. medium term upside. And then we got the break out the top of this little trading range through 220 Rand, and last week it pulled back and I thought, well, it's just pulling back to the top of the range before it then gives another leg to the upside. So we went long at 219 Rand. We bought 480 CFDs. And I used a stop loss below 214, which is effectively a breakdown below the bottom of that trading range. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, it did actually trade down below the bottom of that trading range last week. So that meant that our stop loss at 214 Rand was triggered. And we lost 2,815 Rand there, which is unfortunate. Um, mm. And the share price has some, since recovered somewhat. But it hasn't gone off and given a nice boost to the upside, which is what I sort yeah. of expected. And, uh, you know, so be it. Uh, it is a bit disappointing, though. Um, and as I say, possibly some of these, these stocks have been scuppered by not so much domestic issues, but overseas issues and the, the story around the trade war. Yeah, and a reduced weighting in the, isn't the, the, the sort of emerging markets MSCI index, and yes. that's going to affect all the, the big SA Inc. shares. That's correct. So, so 
obviously South Africa has a weighting in the MSCI emerging markets. It was at about 6.34%, and I think it's dropped down to 6.05%. So in percentage terms, it doesn't sound like much. But when you're dealing with yeah. that quantum of money, it, it amounts to a huge amount of, of hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. So, it, and, and Bidvest has been caught up in that. It is one of the stocks that's been downweighted slightly. Yeah, okay. Well, let's move on. And um, you haven't actually enacted any trades yet, but two stocks to watch, one in particular with one example. Um, and it's 3M, which has suffered an absolute clattering at the hands of the market. So why yeah. would this attract your attention? Yeah, so it's just something a little bit different. Um, you know, often we talk on the show about trading with the trend and all of that good stuff, which is fair enough. But you do obviously get situations where share price can get hammered very hard and it, it overreacts. I mean, invariably, share prices do overreact to news, be it on the upside or the downside. And in this case, what's happened with 3M, is you can see there's this enormous gap in the chart over there from late April. And what happened there was the company came out with lower earnings guidance for 2019 and also weaker profit, weaker first quarter profit numbers, and it decided that's going to lay off 2,000 staff. So, of course, you get that enormous gap to the downside. And then if you look at what's happened subsequent, it's just continued to slide. Every single day it's been going lower and lower and lower and lower. Now, if you'd just been blindly trying to pick a bottom here saying it was too oversold, it's going to bounce, well, you would have been you know, having a very tough time in this stock over the last two weeks or so. Um, what I specifically want to point out here, and we're going to zoom in on the chart with more detail here. What I really want to point out is the fact that during this sell-off, not once has the share price had a daily close above the prior day high. Okay. Right, and often that's a good thing to look for to give you some sort of indication that the selling pressure has stopped and that you might actually be starting to see a bounce. And if you are going to try and pick a bottom, which always is inherently dangerous, I must just say that, but if you are going to try to pick a bottom or try and look for an opportunity to get involved in a stock that is very, very deeply oversold and has overreacted to some negative news, mm. then a way to do that would be to actually just stand back and wait and wait for the share price to form a close above its prior day highest point. And again, I say, if you look at it over the last few weeks, not once has it actually closed above the prior day's high. Yeah. That's right. quite sobering. It is quite sobering. So what we need to watch for is, a, is you know, A, for that downtrend to break, and B, for the share price to close above the prior day high. And I know you've got a chart of Lockheed Martin, which yeah. is a completely different share, sure. where that is um, illustrated. Yeah, so Lockheed Martin is an aerospace defense company, also listed in New York. And I want to show you this, the reason being that here in late December, it also suffered a drop of 20%, the same magnitude as what we've seen on, on 3M. Um, and again, in that case, not once did the share price close above the prior day high hmm. on a number of week sessions. And eventually, when it finally did close above the prior session high, that was then the indication that the selling pressure had now abated. Yeah. And you could let, then use that as the opportunity to buy. And you can see that we've actually seen quite a nice recovery in the share price since then. Yeah. And so the idea would be that you would then buy on that next candle after the price has closed above the prior day high and use a stop loss below the most recent low point. It's probably sort of a bolder, a slightly riskier approach. It is slightly more risky, no doubt about that. Uh, but but it's worth, if, if you're in the business and wanting to try and trade these type of overreactions, this is one way to do it where at least you can give yourself an extra margin of safety. Yeah. Because mar you know picking bottoms is, is one of the sort of the, the do not do things in trading. But if you do it right and you, you have a technique like this, okay. you know, you can do it and there can be money to be made. So I think just going back to 3M, what we need to watch this okay. chart in the next week or so. If we do start to see a close above the prior session high, that might well be our buy signal. Yeah. Gosh, very quickly, we have to wrap up with the portfolios as they stand. All right. So South Africa is down a bit over the last week following that loss on Bidvest. We're still up around about 5% for the year to date. And then offshore, no changes. We're still down around 1% for the, for the year to date. So it's struggling a bit there. But uh, we keep going. Yeah. Okay. We leave it there. Garth, thanks as always for joining us. Garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner.